totally believe that it is always the darkest before the dawn. So you just have to keep pushing through. <laughs> This question is super interesting. Um, it's how to keep your business afloat during a crisis. Well, it's tough, right? Because I think I answered one of the questions about needing that pool of cash. Um, I think that like anything, like any crisis, you need to train for it. So there's a reason in Tennessee that when the tornado sirens go off, we know to go to, you know, the cloakroom or in the bathtub or to our little safe room or whatever that looks like it's because it's just imprinted in our mind that that's what you do and it's because you train and then you tell the kids that that's where it is and go for it it's not that oh my goodness there's a tornado and now we don't know where we should all go and where we should be and what we should do so it's practice it's the expectation that something like this might happen um, then at least you've got some breathing room to think logically about what the next steps might be. And so even if that is a month's worth of cash, two months worth of cash, you're in much better position to not have to panic and have these knee jerk reactions of which often, honestly, you will make the wrong decisions that won't be the best for the business as it moves forward. So the next part of it, let's say we're right in the crisis and you've got no cash. Um, you just kind of need to shut down for a second and breathe, do the same thing, lower all of your costs to the bare minimum and unfortunately, that might mean having difficult conversations with employees and saying, look, we're going to have to have some unpaid leave here. When this gets back together, we will totally go for it. Um, it means that you might have to scale back from where you're located, your office space. Even though we're all working from home, we're still paying rent. Um, you know, I know that there's SBA, PPP um, loans that are coming out and those sorts of things, but that's not helping us like right now today when we're three, four weeks deep into this. So um, preparation is best. The next best thing you can do is have a really honest conversation with people as fast as you can. Go to the person who you're renting the premises from and say, hey, listen, can't make it. We're in a really tough situation. Give me 90 days or give me 120 days and just see what they say. Most people will set something up for you, uh, especially if you've been a good tenant. The same as even your mortgage on your house or even your um, credit cards, things like that. Ask the question. Say, listen, we're in a really tough situation. We want to do this. We want to do the right thing by you. Help us do that. If we go broke, that doesn't help anyone. What we want to do is get all of our employees back to work all of our customers back on board so that we can continue to pay whatever it is we need to pay. So don't run. I mean, this is the thing is that I always say when things get hard, get harder than the things. And that means just making really tough, uncomfortable decisions. And um, most people won't do that. Most people will not get harder than the things. Most people, when it gets hard, continue to back away to a place where they are unable to even function often and make really great decisions or even just the next decision, the next choice to continue just to get you through to that next place. Um, and I totally believe that it is always the darkest before the dawn. So you just have to keep pushing through and just pushing through. If you're the only one that believes it, then that's just the way it's gonna to have to be. But you need to sit there and think to yourself, what's the options? What options do I have? Um, the really great successful people, when their back's at the wall, they kind of push back to it. They work out, work it out. Um, work out what you can do. Can you sell some furniture in your office space? Can you, um, you know, go and do a sideline job, for instance, that might be opened up in another area just to pour a little bit more cash into the business? The one thing I have to say is do not sacrifice anything personal for the business. Do not let your house go under. Do not have your you know, food on your table at home. All of those sorts of things. Obviously, you love your employees, you love your business, but you have to survive for the business to ever have a chance to getting back on its feet. That's tough, You've, especially if you're a servant leader and you wanna kind of make sure everyone else is okay before you are. There's a point where you have to be okay to make sure that they are. Um, it's, it's a really tough thing for a lot of people to do because you have to have really hard conversations, not just with the people around you, but most importantly with yourself.